The newspaper headline has not changed since Moline's kidnapping, and the authorities continue their search for the Rufian and the monster. I'm Jeff with the Halcyon Masters, here to share the second chapter of Blackfeather, Finn, and Moline's epic adventure. Before we turn the page, here's a link to part one. If you're all caught up, let's hit the intro. Moline slumbers after being scratched by the thorn of a hardy orange bush, and Blackfeather's attempt to wake her with love's kiss failed. Dumbfounded by the ineffectiveness of his kiss, Blackfeather learned from Finn that kisses don't wake up princesses. Only the tickle of a seraphin feather will do the trick. Wisdom is smarts plus time. Armed with new knowledge and relieved that it was not his performance which could not stir the princess, our fearless adventurer hatches a new plan to wake his love. He'll venture into the forest to find the Grey Witch and acquire the feather that will tickle her awake. Now this way, to adventure. We'll get there, sometime. Through the forest, Finn carried Moline over his shoulder until they came across the old witch's cottage. Which witch, you may ask? This is the same witch which took the feather from Adagio during his dark parade. Her appearance was young, even if her eyes, hair, and dress were the color of a sea sky in winter. She asked for a dance and made a quick exit with a plume pulled from their waltz. How rude! Back to our adventures. Blackfeather ran to the cottage door and rang the bell. Greetings, old witch. I'm in dire need of a... No. But, dear old witch, I have not yet made my inquiry. Go on, then. I'm in dire need of an azure plume from the wing of a seraphim. No. But I... I carried this princess across the forest. I carried her mostly. I think you're... What reason could you possibly have for refusing us? You called me old? I didn't mean old as much as ugly. Of course you understand. I do. Handsome men like you only keep company with beauties. Precisely. Like the dead one there? Yes, I, I mean, no. She is only partly dead. She was poisoned by... A hearty orange thorn? Those moronic mazes. You must help me. I have never loved as deeply as this. Then don't wake her up. Nothing has a good love story like a conscious woman. You know nothing about love. You know nothing of woman. Within every beautiful princess sleeps a powerful shadow. There is no shadow inside this girl. You're right, but you don't know why. Give me the mirror and I'll give you the feather. The mirror isn't ours to give. Done. Come in. Moline felt a feather soft tickle on her nose. After a blink or two, she recognized her recent captor. My lady, I have carried you across the vast forest to find the feather that would tickle you awake. I carried you mostly. Satisfied with the adventure and falling in love, Moline gasped. My hero. I ask only for a kiss, my love. Be sure to invite me to the wedding. The the what? The wedding. The wedding. The wedding? Now, now. Marriage is... It's a big leap from the first kiss, is it not? Not in these stories. Oh, we shall have a huge royal wedding, much bigger than my sister's, and the train on my dress will be a mile long. However, you do need two royals to have a royal wedding. Indeed. Though I am courageous and fierce and the best kisser on the continent, I am not of royal blood. And so our love must always be the forbidden kind, which is always my favorite. But I want a royal wedding. A queen can promote a rogue to a royal. A pauper to a prince? A bandit to a baron? A degenerate to a duke? A loser to a... That's enough. Then again, you are just petty royalty. If only you were, say, the queen of the eventides? The seeds of the Grey Witch's true plan begin to take shape. Then I can marry whomever I please. So all we must do is defeat the Storm Queen. And likely. We have a troll and my lover's blade. You need a powerful mage. And a dragon or two. 
Then I shall have a dragon or two. Can't just pick up a dragon from the market. A mage, though, is very near. Wait, is that my mirror? A price had to be paid for the feather. <laughs> he didn't know the mirror's purpose, I assume. You will return it. No, but I will return this. The princess is beautiful, but if she didn't get her way, she became a tantruming whore. And this princess, having been born with some not insignificant magical ability, made an obvious mess with anger, and obvious mage-born children go straight to the Storm Queen's army. I would tell most parents to deal with their own brats, but the king and the queen were quite generous. So I trapped their daughter's shadow in the smear, and ever after, she behaved like a useless, spoiled princess. But now... Now it's time to be queen. I don't think that'll work. I will have a dragon. I will have a dragon in every color, and I will be the queen of the eventides, and we will live happily ever after, and that is final. The adventurers stumbled from the cottage in shock. So, Blackfeather, we'll be going the other way, right? That's it! Blackfeather! I had completely forgotten his name. Look at her, Phineas. Such pluck, such moxie. So we're going with her then, towards dragons? Have fun storming the Storm Queen. I love this story. The dialogue between the characters is comical and fun. The story connects our heroes into the battle of the eventides. Most intriguing, however, is how it positions the Grey Witch as a major character in the global conflict. She originally captures Moline's shadow self in the mirror, effectively hiding her from the Storm Queen. She acquired the Azure Feather from Adagio, and then manipulated Moline into conflict with the Queen once her powers were returned. The Grey Witch is moving her pieces onto the board, but what is her endgame? We will have to wait for Sugar Venom to give us more on this story. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to Ivoryheart for the incredible artwork. It brings even more life to this story. Before you go, press that like and subscribe button, and also leave any questions or comments you have in the section below. We do enjoy reading all of them. And until next time, we'll see you on the rise.